Hello, old dog. I just got to sort some out. Let's move there. Uh, that's why I've got it on the wrong arm. Right. Last night we was looking at Candace, Candice or Candice Cantrell. She's a 14 year old young girl. And she's missing. She's believed to be with a piece of SHIT called Timothy Burrow. B U R U E, Timothy Burrow. He's married. And his wife doesn't care. So, what does that say about them two? Right, so I was trying to find out more information today on this case, but there isn't any. There's no newsreels, no nothing. Uh, there was JLR, JLR's video out there, there was my video out there, and there was another video, uh, something about from another YouTuber, Web Sleuths. They're the only, we're the only three so far who have picked up on this, picked up on it. If there are anyone else, I have not seen them. I do know someone got in touch with another YouTuber last night. And hopefully he'll start looking into this case. So we need to get the momentum going everyone. Start looking at this young girls. Right? There's more than one child missing. Sadly, I understand the other lad that was missing was found unalive. I'm not sure on that, I'm going to have to check that up, but I'm sure I heard it last night that it was it was found but not alive. Run. And he was an autistic lad. Then I found another one who was an autistic lad, non verbal. Miles and miles away. Literally miles like two hundred miles away. And his parents are wanting to know how on earth did you get there? He's non-verbal. He don't talk. So he could have said, oh, can you give me a lift? So that's a bit sus. Now, with this case, Timothy, Timothy, <coughs> <coughs> Has known this young girl. Hold on. Let's see if I can find a picture. No. Hold <laughs> on. Um, yeah, if I take that down, I can then pull. Let's see if I can pull this one. Let's oh. see if I can get another background up. There, um, is it going to show? No, I've got my phone, <laughs> but I've got a picture up there. But, um, yeah, let's see if I can get a picture. Yes, you can. Hang on. Let's look at there. This is this young girl, this guy. This piece of SHIT sexually assaulted, SI'd her when she was 11. But guess what? The police got it down to, what was it now? Delinquency of a minor. A slap on the wrist. This guy. Has got her where 
he wants a hook, line, sinker. He's been grooming this young girl since the age of 11. The parents have took a phone off her. She's now homeschooled. She don't go to school no more, so he can't try and get to her through her school. She's now homeschooled. They don't keep her in. They do take her out. They do go out places. They go for walks. They go to the lakes. They go wherever. But she always has someone with her because of him. However, the parents took a phone off her because, uh, I think it was child services or someone said, take a phone off her because she's not mature enough to understand the dangers of having that phone. So they did. Guess what, this piece of SHIT done. I wish I could get a picture of him. I'll see if I can pull it up. It's, it's on, um... Um... I'm a flyer. Because the police were the ones... It's on Facebook. I can't get on Facebook. No. Hang on. I know what I'll do. <sighs> Right, uh, I'll go on YouTube and I'll just stop the channel. And I'll tell you something, he's, he's not, he, he's the worst, he's a, wow, he's not the worst, I know someone worse. Let's see where the flyer is. There. There. Right, let's stop that here. Right. Let's share it so you can see on this YouTube channel the flyer. I can't get the flyer because I'm not, I can't get my Facebook page. Right. Let's take this off. Let's move me out of the way so you can get bigger. And then I'll make that bigger. So you should be able to see him better. Right, here he is. Here. This piece of S-H-U-T. And his name is B-U-R-E. I've got B-U-R. I wish people would give me the right spelling for his name. Because I've had, yeah, I've had B-U-R-E. And I can't find nothing on that name. Can't find nothing on him. Nothing is coming up at all unless I put in his name. Is that where he is? I are Arkansas or something like that. Garland County, everything. And nothing is coming up for me. But there he is. He's lovely, isn't he? Oh, he's gorgeous. <clears throat> Give me a bucket. But he's promised this young girl everything. I'll treat you better than your parents. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. Right? And that's what groomers do. That's a typical groomer. 
and I will promise you the earth. I will give you whatever you want. And then, bump, I have you. Because while I'm giving you everything you want, I will also say, look, don't tell your mum about this. Don't tell your dad about me. They will not approve. You know what I mean? They will not approve of this. Um, if if your mum and dad find out or anyone else finds out, you won't be able to see me. I won't be able to give you all these nice gifts. I won't be able to take, we won't be able to go anywhere. You know what I mean? That's how they get into these children's heads. That's how they worm their way in to their innocent little minds. You could be, they could be having a bad day at home. They've had a bad day at school, they've come home, they're having a bad day at home. And it just takes one person like him to come onto a chat. Boom. But apparently this person used to live next door to them. Right? So, after that incident, when I think she was 11, the parents moved away. Well, they moved away about two years ago, so she's 14 now, so 12. I mean, she's 12. So, it was after that incident, really. Right? They moved away, but not out of, the, out of that state. They're still in. Uh, spring, what is it? Mm, I've got it written down now. The Stilling Hot Springs, Arkansas. Arkansas? Right. I'm, I apologise if I'm butchering the names of these states. US, US states. I apologise now. Right. So they moved, like, away from him. So they didn't have to see him daily. They wasn't living next to him and all this lot. So, but he was still, still messaging her. And what he would do, he'd get her to leave the house during the night once the parents had gone to bed. Right? Meet up with him. Then he always got her back before like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. when the parents would wake up. Always before then. Right, he probably got her back. I don't know. Say, say she left the house about twelve at midnight. He'd get her back for about two, three a.m. And you know what else? His wife knew all about this. His wife knows all about it. He used his daughter to get her to leave the house as well. Yeah? He used to use his daughter's phone to message her. <coughs> File messages that a, a young girl like that don't need to be reading. <laughs> I don't need to be reading them. I'm 50 summer, so I know definitely a 14 year old don't need to be reading messages like that. Right? So he's getting his daughter to lure her out the house, to get her to come out the house. And it got to the point, it's got to the point where she will do as he asked. Right? Because he used to tell her, despair your old, despair your parents, don't listen to your parents. Right? But I know from previous cases in the U UK where the young girls have spoken up now about this that they'd phone them and they'd say, like, like they, they'd promise them the earth, they'd take them out in the cars, they'd buy them, they'd go to the kebab shops and they'd sit in the back having a meal, having a kebab meal for nothing, having drinks, having a smoke, you know what I mean? And uh, they'd pick them up from school and take them about and drive them around in the nice big cars. So, and 
these girls finally spoke out and were listened to. And you can look it up. Google it. I think. Oh, God. Oh, where would it be? Because I can't really do a video on this. Because if I made a video and even privated it or put it as whatever and then gave the link out to someone to watch that video, I can be had up on charges. So I'm not even going to make the video. I can't. Um, what's it? What's the home? Grooming gangs. <sighs> yeah, one is Rotherham. All right. Seven were found guilty. Seven men were found guilty. And between them, they got 103 years. That's nothing. But if you Google it and just put in Rotherham grooming gangs, it will show up, right? And there's documentaries out there about this. There's everything now. So, um, as I said, he would promise her the earth, told her to not listen to her parents, to despise. And her parents said she was very rebellious. That's because he's been telling it to. Plus, as time's gone on, right, as time's gone on, it's now got to the point where... Um... God. He's probably said, look, don't tell your parents if they find out we'll be in trouble. You won't, I won't get to see you again, right? Well, when her parents took her phone off her, do you know what he done? He brought her a new phone in the box, everything, pushed it through the door, or wherever, right? And told her to get rid of the box and hide the phone. What, what young girl isn't going to want a new, want a new, new phone? But then, after a while, they'll tell us about, I brought you all these things. I need a favour now off you. And that's how they do it. Now, this young girl has been lured out of that house either by him or by his daughter because the mother said she went to bed, seeing her go to bed, seeing her turn the bedroom light off, put the fan on, turn the bedroom light off and get into bed. And then, apparently somewhere on a video they had, home security, they seen climb out the bathroom window onto down onto the dog kennel, because obviously the dogs are inside by now. This is just for on the daytime, and running into the woods. Now, I've been doing some, I went on Google Maps, and I was trying to find out where she lived, and she did say in this interview, and you know I can't find it again now. I thought, first, why didn't I have my pen and paper on me? However, I do know, right, they lived near this wooded area. But if you look on the maps here, which I'll pull up in a minute, there's a lot of wooding, wooded area where they live. They didn't live in the main, they lived more on the outskirts. Right? So, this is the town, Hot Springs, yeah. Right, so uh, as you can imagine, they lived over this way. Now, one of the places they said he they named for him was 
Malvern Arc. Hi. Am I going to punch it in? Oh, God. Right. So, oh God. let's get rid of that. So, I oh, don't want to. I want to get directions. I'll just put our spoon thing because I don't. I, I might just sit and listen to that video again with you tonight and see if I can find the address. Right? No. Here it is. Share this. No, say they leave somewhere up here. They've got to live near the forest area, they said. She said they live near a forest area because she got out the back bathroom window and ran into the forest. So they've got to live somewhere. But then again, you've got forests here, you know what I mean? It's hard to, to know until you. I've got the area of where she lives. But you look, if she lived anywhere like this, she's got... Woody area around here. There's the trails and woody area around here. Right? Now, Malvern is apparently where he lived. Or is known to live. Right? And it's... Um, 31 minutes away. Right, so they have. I don't know if that is where his wife lives, but that is one address I've given. Yeah, I kind of put a tag on this. Hmm, yeah, I don't want to move the destination, I want a tag. <laughs> This is something I've got to learn how to put tags on things. No. So then I can just come into my maps and go, well, it's all tagged out. Yeah. And anyway, I can't. So the other place was Royal Ark, Melbourne. Right. Melbourne. Oh, Christ. Okay, so we'll go there. Mm hmm. Where is he? Okay, so it's not here. Right. Oh, that's it. Here it is. There's another place, they said. Now, that is what? 19 minutes away from Hot Springs. Yeah. And I know there was another place up, up here somewhere. But what was it now? Oh, God. Uh, I know there's a third place I mentioned. Anyway, I can't find it. So, 
I'm going to learn how to put pins on the map. I'm going to learn that. If anyone knows, email me. Please. Here's my email address. Right. Because I do not know how to put a pin and delete so that the pin sticks there so that I can just open the map up and I know everything is marked off. Anyway, so. Um, there's two places, but the mother said the last time he took her, he said he mentioned something about putting her in a tent, right, in the woods. Now, I think that was this one. Was it Malvin? This one, up here. Right. So, that was it, Melbourne. So, you've got the Royal. You've got Melbourne. And you got Melbourne. So, there's three places. Now, up here, uh, there's three ways to get there. But, look at the woods. And they said, when they Googled his address, up here, it's like a little shack. And he said, he told you that next time he'd put her in a tent in the woods. Look at this around here. Look at this area. It's fields and woods and it's a big area to look. But they did the search parties and did grid searches. Of all these known locations, right? So you got Melbourne there, yeah. Where's the other place that they said? Um, Melbourne. Where's Melbourne? Let's see. No, I want that gone. I want it gone. Oh, God. Alright. Is... Right, now that's... Malvern is... 34 minutes away. And that's one area. But they've also worried that she could be in Mississippi. <laughs> now, apparently, his wife was putting out a photo. Of this, uh, or putting some out about her being with another lad. Right, listen to this in Clarksville. Don't think so. That's, that's it, Mississippi. So they're in Arkansas, and that like, she feels she could be in Mississippi. Right? And in Mississippi, you've got, you know, you've got Tennessee, Tennessee where Clarksville is. Right, Alabama, Atlanta, and let's take that's it. Why? So, if you look, there's the lines, the state lines, and whatever. So, I suppose the state line here for here would be this line here, yeah. So they believe she could be in Mississippi. Right. 
And that's quite a big area as well. Right, you got all this. And then you got Louisiana down there, Alabama up here, Tennessee up here, and Clarksville is here. Right? Now, apparently, the mother, his wife, I'm sorry, was putting out that she's with a lad in Clarksville. Now, I'm sure the parents would notice, some, the parents would notice a young lad with a young girl. You know what I mean? And, and they're not going to say nothing. Yeah, right. I think she's even in Malvern, which is Mm-hmm. Which is what well, thirty-one minutes away from Hot Springs, or she's in Royal Royal, whatever it is. Right. Which is 24 minutes away from Spring Hot Springs. Or she's in Melbourne. Which is eight to nine point eight miles and is how how long away? Three hours hang on. Two hours fifty seven, three hours nineteen or three hours twenty three minutes away. Depending on what route you take. Right? Now, has she crossed state lines? I don't think she has. If she's in any of them three places, she may not have crossed. Let's just go. That's Melbourne. That's still in Arkansas. Well, it's all in Arkansas, these, these places I'm typing in. So, if she hasn't crossed state lines, I don't believe. Well, if she's in Mississippi, then she has. Which means the FBI should be called in. Because she left, as her mother said, with no makeup, no wash products, no toiletry stuff, nothing. If she's going to go away for longer than a few hours, you take all that stuff, wouldn't you? You take your makeup, you take your, your wash stuff, your Everything. But she didn't even have any shoes on. She didn't even have any shoes on. Right? Yeah. I'm not going to watch this interview, but I will speed it up a little bit this time because... We have watched this interview already. But I just want to stop it again at certain parts. That's what I said. I've looked everywhere on the internet today for any news outlet who's covering this case, and there's nothing, nothing. Why? Why aren't mainstream media over there covering these cases? I know there's a lot of children that go missing. Why? I know that, but surely they could cover it.
right? So he was buying a phone. And then telling her how nice her hand felt in his. This is what, you've seen the picture, and we'll see it again during this interview. Is why would a 14-year-old girl be holding his hand? You know what I mean? She's very impressionable. She, she's not, she's got mental health issues. She's got mental health issues. So, he's playing on that. Two years ago, he was caught with her, and Garland County PD let him go. Me, I've been ripping into the police. What do you mean you're letting this go? This guy, my daughter was with this guy. You know that's illegal. Why aren't you pressing charges? I want charges pressed. You know what I mean? I've been pushing to have charges pressed. I would not have let that drop. So, oh God, so what am I doing here? Right, I would not have let that, that drop. I would have pushed and pushed for charges to be. He that he was telling her to defy her parents. And that's exactly what she was doing. She was being, she was defying what her parents were telling her. It's like, I know better sort of attitude. If you've had kids and you've had, and they've gone through the teenage, you know them. I like how the wife accused them, um, put it out there, that they abused her, their daughter. When the wife knows her husband likes little girls, she knows this. Yet she's got the nerve to say that the mother and father abused her, and she knows exactly what her husband is doing to these young little girls. Right, he used his own daughter, who's now 16. So when she was 11 or 12, she'd have been, what, 14? 13, 14? He was using his own daughter to lure her away.
say Stockholm syndrome. Right? And I will get that up. Stockholm. Right. Stockholm Syndrome. And I've just realised I didn't have that video upon. Well, uh, I'll put that up in a minute. Stockholm Syndrome, a strange bond. Stockholm Syndrome is a rare psychological condition that makes some victims bond with their captors or abusers. Mm. Let's see what else it says. Ah, uh, uh, can continue. Right. Syndrome, who does it and what? Stockholm syndrome is a physical response that causes survivors of abuse to sympathise with their abuser is considered a coping mechanism, not a mental health diagnosis. Stockholm Syndrome is commonly linked to high profile kidnappings, hostage situations, aside from famous criminal cases, regular people may also develop this psychological condition in, re in response to various types of trauma. In this article, we'll take a closer look at what... No, we don't need to know. We won't be taking a closer look. Stockholm syndrome is a calculator when hostages abuse victims bound with their captors. Develop a... The psychological connection develops over the course of the days, weeks, months, or even years of captivity or abuse. Now, don't forget, he's been... Grooming her since she was 11 years old. She's now 14. With this sy syndrome, hostages or abuse victims may come to sympathise with their captors. This is the opposite of the fear, terror and disdain that might be expected from the victims in these situations. Over the course of time, some victims do come to develop positive feelings towards their captors. They may even begin to feel as if they share a common goal and cause. The victim may begin to develop negative feelings towards the police or authorities. They may resent anyone who may be trying to help them escape from the dangerous situation they're in. Because they don't see it as they're in a dangerous situation. Anyone like that, right, with the stock sort of, is developed the Stockholm Syndrome towards their abuser. They don't see themselves as being in a dangerous situation. They don't. So if anyone comes in and tries to take them apart, to split them up, it's no. You know what I mean? So... It's not good. So she's been treated for that, right? So she's been treated for that. Oh, hold on, let me just put this down. Write this down. Right. Hi, Afro Spy, Af Astro from Space. I'm good, thank you. Okay, you rewind. Watch it on two times the speeds. They haven't really missed a lot because I've been going slow. Okay, so Let's go back. So we've got the Stockholm Syndrome. So she's been treated for that. Right. 
But if you're having treatment for that and it, this guy's still getting in touch with it, it's not going to help. So, this family and this young girl has been let down by the health authorities over there that wasn't getting the help that she needed, right? The police wasn't doing anything about this guy. They had been, they'd been let down big time. And I know this girl's probably thinking, but I love him. She's 14. 14. Because I remember when I was 14, I didn't know what love was. You know what I mean? You don't at that age. So, it's hard and it's bad that they, she's been let down and the family's been let down. So, now, I did message... Um, K9, whatever, I can't remember what the full name is on Twitter, but I did message her with the details of this case because she's got two excellent dogs. I'd love to get her to the USA and meet this, this woman with these dogs. I really would. Gator and Ara, armed, ready to attack. Armed and ready to attack. That's how they got that name, Ara. A R A. Armed and ready to attack. Brilliant name, right? And then she's got Gator. Now I think Gator is the one who's trained in finding drugs and people. On a lot. I think Ara. Is also trained to find people, but I also think she's trained. I can't think. I'm going to have to look up her the bio on that and find out about these dogs, what their what their capabilities are. She did say once because she did do a live and she spoke about the dogs and what those their abilities were. But I'm going back a couple of months now. I can't remember what I did yesterday. Never know. A couple of months ago. Anyway, I did message her, gave her a refined info about this case, and could she help? If she could help, could she get in touch with JLR investigate, who would be able to help her even more by giving her the information to get in touch with the parents? Now, this woman, she does it for nothing. You know what I mean? And she'll let the police know she's there and what she's going to be doing there and all this lot. But she don't work alongside police. 
because she don't have no one there but her and two other people with her maybe because she don't want these, their scent all these people like the police the scent from the police and whoever else she doesn't want their scent confusing the dogs So she lets the police know where she's doing and where she will be and is there anything they've got of this young girl that she could use for the scent. Now she says the best thing for a scent for a dog is a shoe, the insole of a shoe. Because your clothes you get washed daily, yeah? Your shoes don't. Right? Some people might put talc in their shoes every night or like spray them with Febreze or whatever. But a lot of people don't. I know I don't. <laughs> right, I don't. I, I do wash them. I put my trainers in the wash. Well, I used to put them in the washing machine until I realised it was fecking them up. Now, I use an old toothbrush, a bit of this stuff called Fangish and scrub. My trying is with them. Then I wipe it, wash it all off. So the insoles get wet as well as I'm washing it off. Wash it all off. Wipe it over with a damp cloth. Get all the stuff off. Then draw a uh, towel dry up. Put a towel on them on the inside and on the outside and dry up. And then put them upside down on my heaters. I do not, no more, put them in. Unless they are a canvas material. If they're leather, I do not put them in the washing machine. The canvas material, I will wrap them up in an old pillowcase so they're not bumping about in the washing machine. I tend to put them in with my towels. It didn't. Here he is, listen to this. He's with a boy. Listen to this. Forty plus. Right, now, let's go to Google Maps. Oh, tell me I didn't close that down. I did. No, I haven't. Right? Now, if we put in Clarksville, right? 
let's say if, if that's where they're wrong about the 200 mile round trip. Right, let's just say. Uh, no, that's 400, 270 miles, so it can't be that. Um, two hundred miles would take them up to Hold on, we'll take them up to oh no, no. Round about Memphis, that would take them to round about Memphis. That's 200 miles, but that's a round trip, and now so it's got to be 100 miles, hasn't it? So, they'd still be in Arkansas. Right? If they weren't, oh, let's try and drag something. No. Let's try and let's no. Oh, I can't get to work. Anyway. I'm trying to get from there to there. Oh, uh, go back, go back, go back, go back, back up to there. Uh, um, hundred mile, hundred mile round trip. Well, there's hundred mile there, right? So let's get me get this. Let's get, oh, let's see, I don't like to work these maps. Well, get rid of that. I'm going to share this again. I'm going to have to work on my mapping. It says the flyer said she vanished on the 22nd around 11 p.m. Yes. Yeah. How did you know she was went missing? Like, was she like not in her bedroom when you like looked and seen? When did you so, discover she went? She came to the room, um, our room, like if she did every single night and did the I love you, um, you know, going to bed. I, I saw her go into her room, what she was wearing and everything, turn her fan on, turn her light off, and I heard her get in her bed. Well, I had had a, um, and Automobile, uh, automobile incident that day, earlier that day, and I hit my head very hard. I had a mild concussion. So I I passed out right after that. I shot up out of bed because, I don't know, somehow my... Oh, she vanished. She's back, but... Oh, no. She vanished. Bad reception. It was very oh, bad, maybe probably... She She'll be back in a second. But uh, folks, we're talking about the case of 14-year-old Candace right, Cantrell. This. And uh, she vanished two nights ago. Let's just keep this. There we go. So, so since you moved, he's still been trying to get in contact with her and he's still been saw that um, Candace's dad had posted his picture, Timothy Bray's picture, and his wife jumped in the comments and she's like um, bashing the parents and just, it, it's crazy. She's defending this man and saying he was never involved with kids, but he has this charge that we know about. So contributing yeah, to the delinquency of a minor. Yeah. 
And now we find out it's about her. Here we go. Yeah. Um, I was kind of filling them in a little bit on the um, Facebook stuff. So basically what I gathered was you were neighbors with him at one time. Is that right? And, and you, did you move away or did he move yes. away? We moved to a completely other side of Hot Springs. Okay. So you moved away about two years ago. Is that right? Yeah. So, so since you moved, he's still been trying to get in contact with her and he's still been communicating oh, with it's her. Like an, it's like an obsession. Even though he's married. Oh yeah. And she doesn't care. Like I had, I had, the cops had screenshots and, and conversations and she just kept, oh no, oh no. She warned him when the cops were looking for him the last time he had my daughter. She called him and warned him that they were looking for him, that he needed to meet them at the gas station and give her back. I mean, is is this a, is he trying to, like, and I don't want to be graphic, I don't want to, I want to say, you know, I don't want to be offensive or anything. Is he grooming her? Or is he, does he yes. feel like he's a, it's a grooming. Yes. Ah, so scary. I'm trying to catch when she says we're about to leave. So that's why I'm running this video again. Because I know she just said we're about to leave. And that's what I want to catch. So, so scary. Now, has uh, you know where he lives. You know where he lives. Like his current address. Because they're saying near Malvern, um, possibly. That is what the daughter had told my daughter. From public record, it appears he is in Royal, but has ties yes. to Malvern and, and some other locations. Um, the, the complexity of what has happened was not done by a child. Was not done by two children. Two children could not, not pull this off for this long without an adult helping. So, um, yeah, so you're thinking he, she, you're saying that she went out the window, went into the woods, and you think that he or, or, or maybe his girl or his wife that he lives with or them together came and picked her, picked her up? Yes, that's what I, that's what I think, yeah. Do you guys live out in like a neighborhood? Do you guys live in the rural areas? Um, we live out past Fountain Lake School. I'm not sure if you know where that is. It's kind of, it's not in town. It's, it's in the county, but it's, it's not in town. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it backs up. Back it up a bit. Where did she say? Without an adult helping. So, um, yeah. So you're thinking he, she, you're saying that she went out the window, went into the woods, and you think that he or 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 maybe his girl or his wife that he lives with or them together came and picked her picked her up. Yes, that's what I th that's what I think. Yeah. Do you guys live out in like a neighborhood? Do you guys live in the rural areas? Um, we live out past Fountain Lake School. I'm not sure if you know where that is. It's kind of, it's not in town. It's, it's in the county, but it's, it's not in town. It's, uh, it backs up to the National Forest. Right, okay. Our property, our backyard. It backs up to the National Forest, right? Right, let's have a look on the maps where we're back then. Right, this is what I was waiting for, right? Um, Fountain Lake. Let's just put this in. Fountain Lake. Arizona. Oh, God. So, is it still in Arizona? Arkansas, I mean. So they've moved right away from where they did live. Right? So they live up here somewhere next to the National Forest. Right? Did she say by the school district? Let's just put mountain like national forest. I are uh, 
Yeah, okay, it's not coming up on the screen. Let's do something. Yeah. Hmm. Let me give us anything. So she lives around this way, up by Fountain Lake, and she said, oh, where they live, back onto the National Forest. Right. But when I put in National Forest, Nothing comes up. Oh, God. Let's just see what else she says. Let's just go back. Just a little bit. Sorry about this, everyone, but I really want to get this so I can mark it up on the map. Yes, that's what I, that's what I think, yeah. Do you guys live out in like a neighborhood? Do you guys live in the rural areas? We live out past Fountain Lake School. I'm not sure if you know where that is. It's kind of it's not in town. It's it's in the county, but it's it's not in town. It's uh it backs up to the national forest. Our property, our backyard, literally is like goes to the national forest. Right. So she said, Fountain Lake up by Fountain Lake School, right? Well, uh, this is Fountain Lake School here, and this must be the National Forest, right? And uh, she said her, her property, her back goes straight out onto the National Forest. This has got to be the National Forest, this. So she must live round this way somewhere. Right, so she's come out the bathroom window onto the dog kennel and gone into the forest. But there's a road, is that a road? Let's see what I can do with my little man. My little man gonna be able to go anywhere. Mm, only on that one, okay. However, there is a road here. Right. There. So if she lived, say, say they lived, I don't think it'd be that looks something or industrial. And that looks very like Franklin School District to Franklin like High School. Pharmacy vintage. So she's going to be living where? I can't see even any houses. Hold on. Because she's, I don't blame her for not giving her a dress out. Like the exact place where she lives. But is this National Forest as well? So. Um, But look at that, if she's going into any of there, there's a main road here. Right? I'll put it on the map. There's a main road here. You know what I mean? Just look at this area. If she's come out into these woods here, from her house. Right? Onto this AR5. Yeah? It's like in the middle of nowhere. But 
Whoop, this here. What that? That's just like fields or something there. I wonder if that's like what they, I would call a fire breaker. So if a fire broke out here, it wouldn't spread over. Or if a fire broke out there, it wouldn't spread over. Good idea if that's the case. You know what I mean? But she could be anywhere. As I said before, this is a vast area. And he said he would put her in the tent in the woods. He, she could be in the middle of the woods somewhere. With him. But I don't know. Uh, why? If he's always brought her back. This is my question now. If he's always brought her back. Why wouldn't he bring her back that night? She wasn't expecting to be out all night. She didn't take no personal care, like her uh, wash stuff, her uh, makeup, anything with her. So she didn't think she was going to be out all night. She thought, I oh, was just like normal. I'll go out for a few hours, do what i got to do, then come back home. Right. I love him, I'll do whatever he wants me to do. So... That's how it got into her little head. This is a vile creature. Vile. Right. Uh, we're not out in the middle of town. We have a six foot privacy fence with 11 German shepherds. In, in our yard. So the only way he could get to her was to lure her out of our property. So why didn't the dogs alert? Why didn't any of those dogs alert that she she was out the house? Why didn't they bark when she went it when she climbed out the window? From the fact the fact that she didn't take anything. A fourteen year old girl did not take makeup Clothing, personal hygiene items, nothing. Shoes, she took nothing with her. She did not expect to run away. She expected to do what they had done before. He was getting her to leave the house and then he would sneak her back in before we woke up for work. How and far I'm, is I know Malvern... that's what she thought was going to happen. And How that's not what happened. How far is Royal uh, Malvern area from your location? About 30, 35 minutes. But I would, yeah, he wouldn't have her at his home. Uh, the so, last time he was going to take her and put her in a tent in the woods somewhere. Whoa. So yeah. let me see. Yeah. Uh, now, 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 did, I don't know if I missed this or not, but did she have her phone with her? She does not have a phone um, because she was being a, uh, a a safety risk to herself, um, after after all of this went down with him the first time, she has um, got this hunger for attention um, in, in that aspect. So she was on um, before like Omegle and porn, porn places, and they were talking about these scenes back and forth and stuff like that. So, so we were advised by DHS to remove those items, Re remove those items that sh she is not um, capable of making a decision for herself when it comes to a safety aspect. Right. So we did that. I don't want my daughter hurt ever. I, I would not ever let anyone lay a hand on my daughter. So, and so I did what I thought I was supposed to. I, I took the things away. She's been homeschooled on a level that 
way beyond what she was being able to do in school because she could not focus at all. Um, so, I mean, she would go, we would take her out, out and explore the lakes and downtown. I mean, it's not like she was sheltered. She wasn't, she wasn't uh, locked up as his wife has been commenting underneath um, her father's. Yeah, check this out. Right? This is where they are in Fountain Lake. This is where I believe he lives. I'm not sure because there's two other destinations he has. Right? And they said it's about 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes drive. Yeah. Depending on which route you take, it could be 39, it could be 30, 46. But you look at this area. Look at this area where he could have hit her. He's not going to hide her around here because it's too close to home. Right? But he could hide her in a tent somewhere around. Yeah. Right? Or here. Or here. She could be anywhere. And the police. I don't understand. Well, I can't criticise the police out there in the US. I can't. Because our police are just as bad. As I said yesterday, it all depends where you live. It all depends where you live. I've just heard of another case today in the town where I live. And it's a young lad, and I'm going to... Right? Uh, let's just... I've got him. I can come back to that. Hold on. Uh, go to my YouTube studio. No. Oh, God, where have I gone there? No. I need to go to my... Oh, I'm going to help. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Right. Go to my community tab because that's where I shared it today. Right? And this is a lag in this in the town. In the town. In the city as they call it. He went missing. Right? Now this is in Dundee, where I live. This page about round round about three PM on a Friday. Is described as white Scottish slim build brown hair. What is wearing everything? The teenager is known to frequent the Aberdeen and Dundee area. Now, Aberdeen, I believe, has like a big fun park place. I believe is up there. So that does entice a lot of youngsters to go up that way. Dundee, I'm going away. I don't know if he'd come from Dundee. It, says, it just says he, he known to frequent the Aberdeen and Dundee area. You know what I mean? No, I've not heard anything of this on the news. I've not seen any of this in the mainstream papers. Nothing. What are the police doing? I don't know. I might try and get in... I, I can't even get in touch with the family because they didn't give us any details. Just tells us if, if we know any information to get in touch with this number. You know what I mean? So... Oh, God. Go back to... Let's go back to this again. I'm just going to start from the beginning again. I'm going to have to go for... Oh, no, hopefully it don't. Hopefully it don't start from the beginning again. Thank God.
All right, let's jump forward to be. Because they are looking on it as a runaway, and um, you know what I mean. And I'm sorry, I am so sorry. It annoys me. It annoys me when they do it here in the UK. Any child under the age of, I'd say, eighteen or sixteen here in the UK, right? But eighteen, I'd say, who goes missing, who's still living at home goes missing and there's some dodgy stuff going on like it just they wouldn't normally do that they was just going out to a friend's house they haven't come home you know what i mean they haven't talked none of their stuff with them and all that lot. they should not class them as runaways they should class them that should still be an Amber Alert. It should be nationwide. Why? Because a runaway is not just going to run away to the local shops. They're going to run away a lot, lot further than their home. So it should be an Amber Alert for every nation in the US to have their phones going ping, 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 ping. Why? So... This is why the Amber Alert was set up to help children. But they have to have a certain criteria. They have to fit a certain criteria. Uh, let's see what it says about an Amber Alert. I'll tell you what it says. Well, Amber Alert. What's the criteria of mean you making? What's the next to a set? What? The criteria for issuing an Amber Alert are as follows. 1. Law enforcement must confirm that an abduction has taken place. 2. The child must be at risk of serious injury or death. Here. 3. There must be sufficient descriptive information of child captor or captor's vehicle to is Yes, I've got all that. The child must be 17 years of age or younger or an individual with proven mental or physical disability. Right? And what did your mum say? Right? She's getting treatment for mental issues. Stockholm syndrome is one of them. Right? There must be sufficient descriptive information of child, which they've got, or cap and they've got the descriptive feature of his car, and of the guy himself. They've got all that. The child must be at risk of serious injury or death. Which is out there with no shoes on. 
from what I understand. And she's not come home. So does that not mean she could possibly have had an injury? Or even worse? Law enforcement must confirm that an abduction has taken place. Wow. <laughs> I think law enforcement did confirm an abduction has taken place because it was law enforcement that mentioned that piece of SHIT, Timothy Burr, not the family, it was the law enforcement because of his previous interaction and conviction with that young girl, the police brought his name into it. So why would they bring his name into it if they didn't think there was an abduction? This meets, in my eyes, every level of an abduction. Right? It's ridiculous. Let's see what else it says. Uh, we've just gone through it all, so there's nothing else you'd like telling us. This should be an amber alert. This should it. I've we've literally just gone through every one of them and ticked it off. They've got his description. They've got his car details. They've got her description, right? They've got what else was he? The mental health issues. They was the one who brought his name into this in the first place, so they must believe there's an abduction to bring his name into it. The parents didn't bring his name into it. The police did. Law enforcement did. So they must believe there's... And I'm sorry, but she's a 14-year-old girl with a 40-plus-year-old male. He normally, he normally brings her back at the end after a couple of hours. Right? But this time she has, he hasn't. Why? Why has he not brought her back this time? That means to me there's a possibility of an injury or, I hate to say, an unaliving. I hope to God we can find this young girl and bring her home. And I hope to God that piece of SHIT and his wife, because she's complicit in this as well. She knows where her husband is. Right? And what I can't stand is, can I not track his phone? Would his wife not have his phone number? Would they not be able to track his phone? Because if I'd have been law enforcement, I'd have had his wife and his daughter, uh, you two, you're coming with us. I'd have had the, both their phones took off them. I'd have been getting them to forensically check those phones. Forensically, that means going back into all the deleted messages, going back two years, whatever. I'd be doing it a forensic search on both their phones. Have they took their phones off them? Have they even pulled the mother and the daughter in for interviews? I don't think they have. So she had no shoes. She had no shoes. Hmm, that's another typical case of a 14 year old.
They're not dumb. I'll tell you what they're doing. Torment. Torture. Because all the time that profile is open, right, you're going to, and you're on that, on that Facebook profile, they can put anything they want up there and they can say, put it, I like a message from her to you. It's all right, Mum, I'm okay. You know what I mean? That is torturing their parents. They're not dumb. That's just torture. They know exactly what they're doing. Right? I'd like to know what the law enforcement are doing. Have they had that wife and the daughter, the 16-year-old, in for questioning? If not, why not? They definitely know something. They definitely know something. The other two children, they've got three children now. I don't know how old the other children are. If they're under 18, I'd have those other two children put in... Uh, uh, child services, have them come and take those ch children out, out of that home. But it doesn't say how old the other children are. Right, no. Oxford is Right now, I know if it if like from a previous case that I was looking at, Audrey Cumming Cunningham, the guy who unalived her, he assaulted a young girl, assaulted a young girl years before, and it got knocked down to. Something similar to what his was, right? And because of that, it didn't go on the sex sexual offenders list. The sex offenders list, it didn't do, get anything, right? So when a case is knocked down to like a slap on the wrist, you don't get put on the sex offenders list. I'm sorry, but every person who is charged with anything. Anything 
to do with a minor. Any person who's charged with anything to do with a minor, right, should be put on the sex offenders list. It might disrupt their job. But that's a punishment that happens when you start messing with with the children. Right? But I hear you up in up where I live. You see them go you hear about them going to court every day and they're coming out with a slap on the wrist. You go, Oh darn, these people are hurting our children. They're going after our children. And you are letting them walk free. But then you've got people who've done I don't know, a bit of shoplifting, whatever. They're getting sent down. It doesn't make sense how these vile-piece people who think they've got a God-ridden right to mess with the lives of our children can just walk free. They really annoy me. It's like now in the UK, right, there's a young girl who was over here from Australia visiting with her mum had just walked out of this big store called Legoland, right, very expensive, but kids love it. She walked out of that store and this guy attacked her with a knife, with a flipping knife. For no reason, it just attacked her. Luckily, she survived. But you think what that's done to that young girl. Think what's done to the mother who's trying to help her daughter from this attacker. And it was only because of this one guy who worked in the shop next door, like a, a cafe or something like that, or tea shop or something like that, he see, he heard the screaming, he's come out and he's seen this guy with the knife and he tackled him down to the ground and got the knife off him. And then someone else come over and held him down as well. Right? It's only because of that guy who stepped up that this young girl survived. Because I don't think if it was, wasn't for it, that guy stepping in and doing what he did, that young girl would have died. And London is a big tourist place. Tourists galore come to London. They are not safe. We are not, no one is safe anywhere in the UK no more. Knife crime in the UK has risen so high, it's unbelievable. There was an attack the other day. There's attacks daily in the UK with knives. With knives, and you know, our government just said, Oh, yeah, they said anyone, and there's a specific court sort of knife, I can't remember the name of it now, brand of it, right? 
uh, what's it called? Oh God, zombie knife. Zombie knives. Who on earth buys zombie knives? I've seen what they look like. You don't buy zombie knives just to sit, sit on your fireplace mantle and go, Oh, look at my zombie knife, isn't it good? And give it a polish every day. No. You know what they've said? You can walk into any police station and hang that zombie knife in and we'll give you £10. Right? So, if they're going, say they're walking the streets and they've got a zombie knife on them, and they get pulled out by the police and they do a frisk by the search, which is very, very rare, but say they did, and they found this zombie knife on them, oh, what's this? I was going to the nearest police station to hand it in. That would be their excuse now. Right? For having a zombie on. I was going to the local police station. I was going to this police station. I was going in to hang it in. Really? I think that's what's happening in the UK. The mainstream media won't pick up on a lot of these knife attacks. Will not. Will not talk about it. Won't put it on their papers. And if they do, they're burying it on like page five and six. And it's a little section of that page, right? Which you could easily skip over. Because London, again, is a big tourist place. You've got other tourist places in the UK where there's got knife crime. You won't hear about it. Right? The only way you hear about it is via YouTube. Because mainstream media will not pick up on them, will not talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, last night I dismissed this, but after my live and I was sitting there last night before falling asleep on my sofa as usual, right, I was thinking about this and I thought, hold on, could the daughter, she's 16, could she be complicit in it, in with this? She knows something. The wife definitely knows. The daughter knows something. They need I haven't asked, heard anyone ask if they've been pulled in by the police. I haven't heard anyone ask that question yet. Exactly, he's not going to take her back to the home, is he? 
Right, because he got caught last time there. So if he took her back to his home, have the police actually done a search? Have they got a cellar? Have they got any hidden little rooms anywhere? Have they been in and got the mother and daughter and the other two kids out of that house and done a forensic search? Have they been in and checked every cavity in that house? Every anywhere? Cupboards? Now, look at that young girl who they did find within 24, 48 hours. She got kidnapped, uh, abducted from the, uh, this caravan park. She was riding a bike in the USA, US. And they found her within the, just within the 24 hours, uh, 48 hours. And he had her hidden in a cupboard. Now, have they been in that house? Have they searched the house? No, that is sick. Right. I hope the law enforcement have been out and searched that house forensically. Not just, oh, well, he's not in this room, or he's not in that room, or he's not in the kitchen, he's not in the bathroom. No, forensically. Like, they've got things where they can scan walls to see if there's any hidden spaces behind the wall. You know what I mean? Have they been and done all that? I doubt it. I'm just going to skip this bit. Up here a little bit. Oh, let's go back a little bit. Right, let's have a look. Royal. That's Royal. Royale, or whatever they call it. Right, which is 30 minutes, 37 minutes from where they live, or 40 minutes, depending on what route they take. Right? So let's just have a quick gander around there, shall we? Let's have a quick gun down. I don't know where about he lives. I've got no idea. And I'm not giving out the addresses. But it looks like it's very rural. You know what I mean? Very rural. Out there you are. Sorry, I keep forgetting to share. It looks very rural out there. Let's get rid of it. Oh, go off there. Right, so that, this is Royal. Royal, or whatever, however you pronounce it. But it looks very rural. Like... You know what I mean? It's... So there's some roads, like this road is not 
on Google Maps, not be marked up. But there's this place here, place is around here. Right? Look how rural it is, and you've got little places here. You've got a nice home there. And you got another home in this woods there. You've got a road, road there. Oh, it'll take you so far up there. But it won't take you all the way. Right, you've got a nice home there. But she said it's like a little shack. So, it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere around here. So, it's a shame because this young girl needs to be found. This guy needs to be locked up. Full stop. Lock him up. Throw the key away. Never to see the day of life, the light of day again. His wife. She's complicit. And as I said, I'm not sure now. I did say yesterday, I thought, well, perhaps she's 16. He's telling her, you do this. You do it now. Because we don't know how he was with his own kids. Right? And this is why they need to look into this. The police need to be on top of this now because... It's just ridiculous. you got three children in a home, in a house, whose father likes little children. So we don't know if he's abused any of them when they were younger. Right? We've got a wife who couldn't give two hoots, is quite happy for her husband to go off and do whatever he wants with little children and young girls. Yeah? She's definitely complicit in this. She knows where he is. And has I'd like to know what have can they not track him on his phone? Has he not got his phone on him? Why can't they track his phone? Get her phone off them, get the daughter's phone, and even the other children, if they're old enough and they've got phones of their own, get their phones. Right? Because the mother could be using one of their phones to phone him. So it doesn't show up on her phone. Get all the phones. All the electronics. Laptops, computers. Gaming systems. You name it. Get the lot. If they've got it, you get it. And you, might, you forensically search them. Right? Because... The more I listen to this interview, the more I get mad because I just think there's so much that the police could be doing. They could have searched, been, I dragged all of them out of that house. Right? Police tape around the whole of that property. Right? And I get forensically search the house. Oh. Forensically search the house. Because just because they don't think he'd take her back there doesn't mean he hasn't. Right? Because if, say, they was in, let's have a look, go up to here. Right? Say they was in this shack where around here somewhere, wherever he is. Look at the woods. Look at the forests. And whatever. You've got this area here. You've got this area here. You've got loads of areas where we could have her in a tent. You know what I mean? Look at this. Not so much there, but here. To be in a tent anywhere. They need to get that house checked. They need all their phones. Because I'll tell you now, that wife knows where he is. 
and I think the daughter might do as well. Who else has he done this to, I'm wondering? Has there been any other children he's been messing with, apart from family members? Now, if he's made advances on his on a niece, Do you really think he hasn't made advances to his own children? Hmm? Think on that. I think he has. And so that's why those children need to be put into care, uh, social service, the child services hands and interviewed carefully and everything else. Slowly and carefully. Because I think this goes, and I don't think it's just him. I really don't. I said this last night, and I said it before I seen this interview, and when she turned around and said she don't believe he's working on his own, I said it before then. I haven't even seen all that interview. I seen it, and then I thought, no, I won't watch it all. I'll watch it when I go live tonight. So I haven't seen all that interview, and I said then. I believe it's not just him. I believe there's others involved, adults involved. There's his wife. She's definitely in on it. There's other people in on it. You know what I mean? They could have... Oh, it just makes my stomach churn. Why do they keep doing this to the children? Why do they think they've got a God's written right to mess with the minds of our children and to mess with their bodies. You know what I mean? They are children. And the sooner people realise this and say they're sticking up for sickos like this. And as soon as police start locking these people up, instead of letting them go, and not even put on a charge where they have to go on the sex offenders list, uh, register. Every person who's picked up for interfering, messing with a child, anything like that, right, should go on the sex offenders register. But he's not on the sex offenders register. So he could live anywhere. He could live by schools. He could be standing outside the school. You know what I mean? Watching the children playing. He could be watching them coming and going from home, from school to home. This is the problem. Anyway. As I said, there wasn't any more information come out on this. I will keep my eye open out on this case. For any more updates, I'll check daily. If any more updates come out on this, I will do another video on it. But at the moment, I'm not going to keep report going over that interview because I just want to work out how to put the tags on the map. <laughs> so then we could probably, once I've got them all tagged up properly on the map, I haven't got to keep typing it in. It. It'll be pinned up on the map, you know what I mean? So I'm going to do that, figure out how to do that and keep an eye on this case because see if any news reels, news media pick up on this case because sometimes they only pick up, up on the case when enough YouTubers are out there talking about it. I'm talking about it. Web sleuths were talking about it. JLR was talking about it. He'd done the interview. Craig it to him. Right? We need more YouTubers out there picking up on this case. Pick up on it now. And then hopefully the news people will think, oh, oh, this is showing up a lot on our on YouTube. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you something else. I was thinking about something today. And it's got to do with Sebastian, uh, Rod, um, Sebastian Rogers case. Right? There's a lot of people who are doing some fantastic work on this case. And I'm thinking, 
You know what? You are literally doing the work for the police. You're sitting there doing all this, figuring out the cars, what type of car fit with those lights and all this lot. And the police are sitting there saying that Fijo's got no concept nothing to do with the cars and all this lot and we're sitting there figuring out what cars it is and I'm thinking well by listening to all these interviews the parents have done we are putting a live out there and we're picking up the red flags we're doing the work for the police we're literally doing the work for the police no wonder there's only one person on this case you now Sebastian Rogers one Active PD, police officer, PO, police officer, a guy working on this case. That's how much some of county feel about this case. Anyway, I'm not wrong about that. I will be talking about that case tomorrow. But I will keep an eye on this today, tomorrow. If there's any new updates, I'll come live. I'll just come live. If I see a new update in the morning, I'll do a live. So, please make sure you're subscribed and you click the all. That way you'll be informed of when I go live. Okay? Because I might only be able to give you 15 to 30 to 15 minutes, 30 to 15 minutes notice. Probably about 30 minutes notice because I'm going live. If I get some information, you need to hear this, right? But, um, no. So, please subscribe. If you haven't already, please come go and subscribe to be kept up with all future videos, all future lives. And I will see you tomorrow night at 8pm where I'm looking at the case of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers where the FBI have now come out and given a $50,000 reward for any information leading to the finding of Sebastian Rogers. 50, now, if that doesn't loosen some tongues, I don't know what will. And now the FBI put a reward up, do they actually feel there's, there's an abduction? Do they feel he's being abducted, uh, kidnapped? Do you know what I mean? Are they looking on that avenue now? We don't know. But it's good news that they've got a £50,000 uh, $50, reward up now for Sebastian Rogers. It only took six months to get this reward in place. I only done a live the other week about why, no re why there was no reward. I said to EBI, FBI and all that, I could set up a reward. I said it in that live. I looked at it, I spoke about it, and then today they've come out and said they've set, uh, given £50,000 reward, uh, dollar, $50,000 to anyone with information concerning the whereabouts and finding, leading them to find Sebastian Rogers. Right? So we'll talk about that tomorrow night, and I'm going, I'm tired. I've got to take my tablet because my alarm went off. So I will be back tomorrow night. Thank you all for watching. If you're watching on replay, please hit that like button. If you're watching on TikTok, uh, X, please show some love. Leave me a comment. I do read your comments. Okay? So please leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions on this case. Everything. Okay? So till tomorrow. Stay safe. Give your children a hug and have a good day.